Welcome to Security Guy Radio at As Is 2016 in lovely, wet Orlando. Can you hear that rain? It sounds terrible. It's, it's unbelievable. We need the rain. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Um, uh, I'm Kathleen Griggs. What's the name of your company? We're from uh, I'm from Data Buoy Corporation. Data Buoy, I like that name. Data Buoy. Mm-hmm. Tell me what. The, tell me what you guys do. Well, we manufacture uh, an embedded sensor technology. So it's um, sensors that sense, they think, they communicate, and that's been the basis of our philosophy behind Data Buoy is embedded systems, command and control, smart intelligent sensors. Uh, we offer a product called ChopPoint, which is an intelligent sensor network that. Um, listens for it's an acoustic sensor it's an acoustic sensor network yeah. that uh, listens for a particular gunshot signature detects, oh I like that we detect and we localize on the source of the gunshot now when you say it's a network are mm-hmm. you meaning that you can you can put a lot of your devices in a lot of different places and can they be shared by others in other words uh, let's say we deployed it in here there's a lot of users in here there is you know as is convention center there's as is there's the convention center people there's the facility people could anybody log in and have access to that or is it really set up for an end, one end user so to speak well the network brings you a lot of things and um, we sense we think and we communicate and so the purpose of the network is not just the fact that we are tied in to the rest of the world in terms of our ability to communicate our data but the network for embedded for the embedded systems world really means that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts okay and the reason for that is our nodes are individually are intelligent one of our nodes can actually identify and locate a shooter on its own but oh. a sync right we are we have intelligent sensors yeah. <laughs> we have an intelligent sensor network meaning the sensors are intelligent and it's a sensor network that augments the intelligence so we can sense we can locate with an individual sensor but we use multiple sensors to actually eliminate multi-path, um, reduce the false alarm rate, and it's the entire system concept that provides much more information that you can get out of a single node. And one example is a gunshot trajectory. If you have a high power rifle with multiple views onto that signature, we can actually um, plot the trajectory of the bullet. Wow. We can't do that with a single node. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Well, I, you know, I do a radio show, right? So I love audio and monitor <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I've heard that, uh, and I, I've just heard this about the industry in particular, that the analytics are getting to a point where you can almost tell what caliber weapon it is. Hey, that's a forty-five as opposed to a twenty-two. Is that are we close to that? Our system works on analytics. Um, obviously, the uh, shockwave signature is a unique signature so that you know you're working with um, a particular type of weapon, um, which is distinctive from a pistol sound. But in addition, I mean, it's old fashioned geometry. So um, the issue with the reason you use an embedded sensor is because you want something up close. You want something that's going to be actually there at the time measuring the right. signal. And proximity matters. And so if you're close to the shot, if you're there experiencing the shot from different perspectives, then, um, then that's where we get all of our information. So the reason for covering an area is not just to, well, one, to be be there where, where the event occurs, but it's also to be able to sense the geometry of what happened in the event. Now, who are some of your clients? Not names, but I mean types of clients and markets this goes to. So um, our clients obviously are concerned about mass shootings. Um, it's, it's areas, it's clients who have a responsibility to protect uh, lots of members of the public so um, schools are obviously very concerned sure. about protecting the children and there's a you know it's an area where there's a, a large population of and they have a responsibility to protect a lot large number of people areas like um, parks or malls stadiums um, anywhere where, where the potential for a catastrophic event if there was an active shooter in that situation is is someone who's concerned about concerned enough to look to a system like ours so i get the part where uh, let's say the school comes in they hire you they set it up it's all put into the network a gunshot goes off is this tied to mass alert systems as well in other words as the school can i say no when that gunshot goes off i want to send a text out that says 
in quadrant four by the football field, there's a possible gunshot. Stand by for more information. As opposed to a gunshot goes off, now I have to take the time to have somebody analyze it and decide when I'm going to notify people. Um, in current practice, an emergency response, um, the more severe the event, the more confusing the information. Right. So um, having a system like ours, which tells you exactly who, what, when, where, how, is one thing. But again, our ability to share it across the network with everyone at the same time, with a, our, our, let me back up, our system actually provides a timestamp uh, and a location and also we queue video. So we have uh, an image of the shooter, the time of that particular shot, and the location of wow. that shooter at that time. And so that eliminates all the confusion in, in, in forming a response. And a lot of, in, the, in current practice, a lot of the problems happen when there's, there's actually a situation where things become cyclical, cyclical when the responders are there and someone reports that they saw someone maybe in the back of the building and that might have actually been a responder who was there oh, five yeah. minutes before but by the time the phone call got through the network it, it actually literally compounds itself it's 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 much more of a problem than people realize and, well and so we're eliminating all of that yeah and then you know you, you somebody put something on twitter and all of a sudden that becomes a fact exactly first it's just a speculation or something right exactly and now, so this is actually you know good hard yeah um precise and accurate data that everyone has so there's um there's no more reason to be confused. now you find that your clients want to share that data with the people inside their building with the people inside their campus or do they want to grab the information and they want to use it and respond with it because i my model would be if i was in charge and i used to run fox and disney big campuses right i'd put that on everybody's smartphone if that went off you get the same information i got and then i'd say stand by for more information at least if I could save some seconds to get you out of this section over here that's in danger, it's helped. As opposed to having a little bit of a delay where I look at it, I analyze it, then I send out my first response to it. You see what I'm saying? Where do you find the clients come down on that? You know, we have we have all of the above. Okay. Um, we have clients that are interested in, um, we've worked with mass notification tools or applications that have staged responses. So. Um, I, I don't know if I want to name names, but you know, one company we actually send our shot reports to. That response, that shot reports goes out to mobile um, mobile responders who are in the area. So, like a school principal and maybe a handful of people that they know are locally available right. that can go and and either respond or check out what's going on on the scene. If that if those people don't respond, it goes to the next level, mm -hmm. and the pool of um, the pool of subscribers grows. Or it might go directly to 911. Um, so that is what we kind of call a workflow. Yeah, and workflow, yeah. We are working with um, that commercial company, those app developers, and the first responders to really table what, what should be the proper workflow and, and how much time do you want to spend before it goes up to 911. Um, and it's a public private issue. Right. And that's, um, so we're not directly involved in, in forming the policy, but we're. We're enabling that, um, but you also brought up another interesting point about you know having things could happen in the building. Also, the building, in a sense, could respond. Right. So we are integrated with automated lockdown systems. Oh, that's good. So, um, so our system actually can initiate a, a lockdown yeah. event. Yeah, and, and time is critical. I mean, you can save three right. seconds. You can save a lot of lives. Right. And in that case, um, those would be a pre-planned response that the the building manager has already decided this is what we're going to do and in case of an active shooter event. Right. And and those things can start happening before the responders arrive. Do you find that uh, that the average consumer is becoming more and more aware of this sort of technology? Or is it still kind of up in the security boardroom and meetings about things? That's, a, that's another really great question. Um, I would say just in the past year or year and a half, um, the environment has definitely changed. I think um, a year ago, someone being introduced to our system would say, that's interesting. They'd never heard right. of that before. And, oh, is that really necessary? And now the environment is is changed to how much is it? Oh, Who's that's using good. it? And, yeah, um, I, think, I think Orlando and San Bernardino just tipped the scale. 
people said, you know what, right. we can't afford to sit around anymore. We can't say it's not going to happen. These are two examples nobody thought could even conceive that would happen. And now we got to do something about it. You know, And I, I like this technology because this is, well, it's really verified information about an actual event. And, you know, analytics are good and projecting things are good and forecasting is good and all that kind of stuff is good. But, hey, a gunshot, it's pretty clear. No matter what happened, it's not good. Maybe it's not an active shooter, but it's it's just not a good thing. We've got to respond to it. And so having information and technology to detect it is is really valuable. It's really, really valuable. I, I mean, I want to say the, the analogy is your fire detection system. We don't live in fear that our building is going to burn down. Right. And yet we have fire detection systems because they work in an event of a fire. Yeah, and, and we do fire drills, right. but we don't do active shooter drills. Which and is weird. Well, some some company. Oh, well, now lot, they're starting to do but, active shooter drills, yeah. and the and the issue is is that if you have something that works in the event of an active shooter, then um, then this is some. It, it's a reasonable thing. If you already plan for it, you already drill for it, then you already are expecting that this is a potential threat that you have to do something yeah. about. Who can afford this? Uh, large company, small company. So. Uh, I'm just going to give an example of a anyone who uses IP an IP camera network and and has a camera network and a maybe a DVR mm -hmm. has um, spent more money than they would spend on a shot sensor for sure. Wow, that's amazing. And um, so this is this is really on the range of maybe a, per, a percentage of your it's a couple of cameras. Yeah, are you finding it's that? It's really uh, like adding a couple of cameras. So a school there, or a business that has. 50 or more cameras would um, would maybe get six or six sensors. Wow, that's sensors. fabulous. Are you yeah. finding that uh, police departments are using it in high crime areas? Well, we have some interest from some smaller police departments and interest in covering certain areas where there are hard crime, but only several blocks. But we're not a wide area system. Um, our target market is the is the private sector okay and the vast majority of cameras i mean obviously the, the really the vast majority of cameras are in the private sector yeah and they're great for finding people who are stealing things but in the event of an active shooter a camera doesn't detect a gunshot our system is the thing that cues that camera network and we can bring up that image within in seconds yeah. and so what we can do is we can create instant valuable information from that camera network whereas honestly if i was in an event in a mall and I and I was in an active shooter event and I knew that there were cameras all around that could see what was going on I had the expectation that the first responders should also be able to see that and that's what we're providing something that I think is reasonable to expect every time I do an interview and I'm probably gonna do 50 this whole uh, show I finish with do I feel better than when I started the interview or worse when I started the interview? because some things make me worry and some things make me feel good I feel good about this interview I feel that this product is making us safer, and it's going to stop a lot of things. Well, thank so you. So thanks for coming on the show. This is okay. fabulous. Give us your name one more time. Kathleen Griggs. And the name of the company and website? DW Corporation. Um, www.dbuoy.com. Thanks for coming on Security Guy Radio. Appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Thanks a lot. Okay.